password on this computer. Mm -hmm. And that's just to get things going. And it's recording. Here we are. Okay. Uh, now I have to remember who we are and where we are. Let's see. This is, uh, we're uh, Webheads in Action, uh, doing a recurring uh, event that we used to do, gosh, starting the turn of the century. For about 10 years, we were doing GMT on Sunday, on Sundays. And now we've kind of turned into Talon, which is teaching and learning in isolation. Coming to you also through Learning Together, learningtogether.net. Uh, this is uh, Learning Together episode, I think, 456, but you know, I often miscount. I, I never do remember. It's Talon, uh, no, sorry, it's a, what the, the sixth Webheads revival event. And Talon, I think it's 12 or 13, probably 13, something like that. And let's see, it's the 3rd of May, 2020. And there you are. We're started. Let's see, we have uh, Chris here from Barcelona. We have Elizabeth, uh, probably in Grenoble. Exactly. <laughs> and Mirna from Caracas. Mirna is a friend of yes. Daphne, Daphne Gonzalez, who is a, a very good friend from back at the time we used to meet regularly. I last saw yeah. Daphne in um, Denia in Spain, I and mean, I think she's still there. Well, I was um, I watched the recording of um, Rita uh, and her Jing mm -hmm. um, Donk update, mm -hmm. uh, and it was totally inspiring through a number of channels. Um, the first one was it was the first hand illustration of how, imp how important the teacher-student relationship is. Like, hey, Ke I'd been seeing this was going to happen and all of this. And like, hey, Ke I was saying, oh my God, no, I can't lose my Jing son. What am I going to do without my Jing son? Hi, Nina. Hi, Michael. <laughs> well, I think they're going to replace it with something, which is going to be free. But I mean, the problem with Jing, as you probably noticed, <laughs> was that if you're if you're doing images it's it's quite fine it's really great but if you're doing a video hi michael how are you doing uh -huh. talk to the hand so we have we have more people here well, uh, hi nina hi. nina in maryland michael in adelaide australia and uh, mm -hmm. michael is an original webhead one of the founders of webheads in action nina almost back there it was a very long time with him. 2006. 2006, yeah, but that was, we were strong going back then. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met Mirna before. Yeah, Mirna, she's a friend of Daphne's from uh, Caracas. Yeah. Oh, yes. Caracas. You said you were a professor, Mirna? A professor at one of yes, mm -hmm. yes, I teach at uh, UPEL. Instituto Pedagogico de Caracas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I worked, uh, I work uh, here in Caracas with, uh, worked uh, with Nair Aparicio. I don't know if you oh, know her. Nair, yes. Yeah, we, she was here last week. <laughs> yes, she's uh, yes. Uh, the teaching and learning, isn't that it? Teach, uh, what was her yeah. name, group? Learn us learning yeah, but, and, learning and uh, technology. Learning and technology. Yep. Facebook group. And she invited me to to join this group, although I I I'm not a a, a very experimented teacher in that area, but I'm curious and I really would like to to learn a lot of, from you. <laughs> Sorry. You're welcome. I just Good morning. Program. Thanks. Sure. May I Thank ask a Zoom question? Of course. Yeah. Okay. So in the time-honored tradition of Webhead, yesterday I was showing my cousin in Los Angeles how to use Zoom, how to host a meeting. Um, I've had hosted a few meetings, I would say under 10. Zoom. And I've done some of the tutorials, and I thought I remembered how to do it. <laughs> but 
so you know so we we were kind of exploring together and i would tell her something and then it maybe it didn't work out that way. so i i went to, not to settings but i went to the host a meeting thing and i chose uh require a password mm -hmm. but it didn't uh because when they when you copied the invitation did you copy the very long link there's a short yes, yes the long I link did. includes the, the password i just automatically copied it yeah and i went into settings and i checked when i remembered that they have all these things in settings and, and require a pass yeah it's it's that when they send you an invitation to send to other people it the link includes yeah. the password and right. uh if you give them that link uh it it lets them in but you can also just give them the what do you call it the you the id for the room the id and then give them a password and so like for okay, example so when when you have when you send them that whole thing they, they just click on it and they come to the meeting. They're in the meeting. Meeting Nina. Yeah. If, yes. There's I also. Would, a I, would, I was. Mm -hmm. No. Where do you find the short link? I noticed that we have a short link for this. Yes, I think it's. And I did. It's, it's I did have to put in my password. In the. Um, in the invitation there might be a, a link to the zoom meeting there i don't know but um there's only one link or you could uh you could cut off the part that says password so i i think the the end of your the if the zoom the the, the link with the password in it is going to have a zoom.us and then it has your your um, room number and after that, if you cut it off, then people will have to use the password. Okay, I'm trying to open now to see what the it's um like. the, the the there was a very competent person the other day who explained a lot of things and especially gave the indication to the tutorials in the initial. Um, in the initial, you know, when you sign in on the initial site on the front page of the yeah, site, they have there's a whole series of tutorials, and she was so inspiring. I, I started to watch one, and then I didn't actually get any further. <laughs> well, I've watched, <laughs> but it's several, definitely actually. Oh, oh well, there you go. That's a yeah, way to go. And the, the other problem I was having was was that my cousin has a Mac. And so we weren't always seeing the same things, but that was the main one that I was, I was. Uh, well, you saw that we didn't see the same layout, uh, you know, that, that seems to be inherent. Yes. So, you know, the one doesn't see the same thing is not shocking in itself. Okay. So I'm going <laughs> um, to share I'm gonna my you. screen with you guys. Uh, excuse me. So you can I'm, I'm attending my next meeting. Uh huh. Uh, I'm attending um uh uh encuentro. Well, um one cup of okay. What's this? That's uh, you're, you're sharing something. That's okay. Um, no, no problem. I attended I attended a workshop in an encounter for a um, Latin American educators or professors, virtual educators were talking about and they said that a, it, they, they gave a lot of uh, a information regarding Zoom because uh, this has been a, a, a interrupted by by hackers and uh, they they sometimes take your uh, personal information especially if you're using your telephone uh, your cell phone 
uh, and that's my case right now because I'm using my cell phone. And uh, uh, one of the things that they recommended was what I observed here to to get in in the um, in the meeting, which was having a uh, not just the ID but also a password. Yes. Right. Well, that's why I'm there. asking this question exactly because yeah. I set a password, mm -hmm. but then people are not being asked to produce it. Okay. So this is this yeah. is an, another meeting that I have later today. Okay, hold hold that up and on I the screen. I see a meeting ID and I see a password. Okay, can you see the join URL down below? No, no, you scrolled past it. Okay, just leave it there. You see join URL. This, yes. And you yes. see where it's zoom.us. Uh, it has yes. some numbers ending in 3438. That's your uh, room ID number. So if you remove everything after the question mark where it sort of says PWD, whatever that stands for. Okay. It's an encrypted password. It's your password encrypted. So I think just remove the question before the, the question mark. So would I take yeah. that out? Plus the question. Well, before you do that. I'm not doing it. I'm just oh. asking. I would, I would try copy the invitation and see what it looks like because to me that when you send that as an invitation, it's going to give you the ID and All the right. password. So I don't see the thing that... Okay, yeah, copy, copy the, the invitation, invitation and show here. us what it says. You see where it says copy where, the invitation? Where is, where is the copy the invitation? To the right of the on the, right, on the right hand side of the URL. The right of the URL. The same says, same line. Yeah. All right. Let, let me just. Okay. Got it. Because the uh, our yep. pictures were okay. On top. Okay. So it says here. Here's Bobby. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bobby. Hi. Hi. Hello, Bobby. Bobby. Hello from the U.S. of A. Oh, all. <laughs> And I hope that you have a, a good meeting. And I'm going to go make dinner. But oh, I hope you make a good meeting. dinner. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you guys. Enjoy. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Nice to bye see bye. you. Bye bye. See you in the kitchen. Uh, in the dining room, I guess. I, I don't think I'm needed in the kitchen. Anyway, yeah. So it, it has the same uh, URL with the question mark. Right. Yeah. So you just cut off the question mark and. PWD. No, I, I don't cut off starting with PWD. I cut off starting with the question mark. That's right. Yeah. Same on Facebook, okay. by the way. If you get a URL from Facebook, they have a W, uh, they have, sorry, they have a, a question mark FID or something like that, which means Facebook ID, I guess. It gives you all this other stuff that lets Facebook, if you, if you use that link, it lets Facebook track uh, you back to uh, whoever used the link. But Mostly, if you click on a link in Facebook, you get all that question mark FID equals crap after it. And then if you're going to use it yourself, just delete all that after the question mark and everything else, and then refresh the screen, and then you'll be able to use that link without letting Facebook track stuff. So. Well, thank you. I, I never took a tutorial that explained that. That's Me sure. neither. So settings, I have to enable uh, the password. When I set up the meeting, I have to enable the password again. And then before I send the invitation. <laughs> yeah, I if you want to people to use that. the password, just cut off all the stuff. Uh, Starting <laughs> with the question mark. Just yeah. cut off. Yeah, cut off the stuff with the yes. question mark. Yeah. Suze, you got it. Okay. I'm experimenting today with uh, using a Zoom on my iPad. Ah, okay. So I noticed you I had a green new... sweater, but you need a green ceiling. Uh, uh, yes, what? yes. That's why the, the, the camera is a, a strange angle. <laughs> but I like the green sweater. However, I, I think I have eliminated now the stupid background, you could, foreground. You could turn it to the blue wall and that might be... I have a blue there. wall, yes. It's a very yeah. nice blue wall. But mm -hmm. if I point it to the wall, you can't see me. Yeah, then you could use so, cool beach I can uh, see you, but background. I'm sort of there. looking up at you. So I guess... Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, cannot, I cannot make it totally vertical. It doesn't matter. No. no. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Well, we I'm know here. you so well. Yes. 
Yeah. How's everybody doing COVID wise? My my cousin in France died of, officially of COVID this oh, week. Oh no. But I'm sorry. In fact, uh, he was in a nursing home and had stopped taking nourishment. So mm. although he tested positive for the virus, um, his sister um, didn't feel that that was truly what killed him. What mm -hmm. killed him is that he had been in a nursing home for nine years, getting oh. worse and worse and worse. And, uh, but anyway, that's the official cause of death. So it was kind of a release for everybody, but he's the first person that I know. Hmm. So he was, died during the he was tested for COVID and it, it, the test was positive and he, he ran. I guess. But on, on another note, did you all hear about what the governor of Maryland did this week? No. Uh, she it's arrested all those story. protesters and threw them into a prison? No, no. Now, our governor is a Republican and we are a deep blue well, Maryland, state. Maryland, I've seen Michigan. Yeah. Our legislature is controlled by Democrats, but the governor is a Republican. But he's he has not been afraid to disagree with the president. So anyway, he's married to a Korean woman. And through her good offices, he was able to order a big shipment of uh, COVID-19 tests or coronavirus tests. As you probably know, in the United States, we are, our testing program is in a shambles because we didn't have enough tests and don't have enough tests. And what the federal government has said um, is that states are responsible for getting their own uh, PPE, the personal protective equipment and tests and everything that they need. Competition with each other and with the federal government. A nightmare. So anyway, Governor Hogan managed through his wife to order tests from Korea. Um, but the other thing that he knew is that the federal government has been confiscating this stuff that the states, hi Lane, that the states have managed to buy, taking it and distributing it to, to other states or to companies who then resell it. It's just, it, it's surreal. So anyway, what Hogan did is he, re, he had the plane rerouted. I'm not sure how he did this because Korean Airlines has never flown into uh, BWI Airport, Baltimore, Washington Airport, but it would usually come into the Dulles Airport in Virginia. But he managed to get the plane rerouted into an airport where they would never expect it was coming. And he brought out the Maryland National Guard and the state police to meet the shipment and they took it somewhere undisclosed <laughs> to protect it from our federal government so they couldn't get their stinking hands on it. Yay. Can you believe that? That he had to do that? Yeah. But he did it. Mm -hmm. so. Hi, Graham. We haven't seen Graham in forever. Years and years and years. Where are you now, Graham? Spain. Yes, Where it's been a long it's been a long time. I'm in um, nice Mexico to City. Oh, Mexico. Oh, how, nice. did, how did you end up in Mexico? It's a long story, but I've been here oh, for about a year, year and a bit now. In badly need of a haircut, as you can see. Oh, <laughs> that's everyone. Well, not really, but uh, how is the COVID situation there? Um, things are just starting to be taken seriously, really. Well, for the last three weeks, people have have been more or less sort of staying at home. But there's nothing forced, so you don't have to. There are no rules here. And there's so many people that earn their livelihood 
by being out on the streets and stuff. So it depends on the area. So I've heard that in some areas, you know, people are just living their life as normal in, in various parts of Mexico because it's a choice between that or not having anything to eat. So mm. it's a bit a bit tough for a lot of people. I mean, I think there are like 20,000 cases stated now and 2,000 dead. But that most people think that um, the figures are not right, that it's a lot higher than it actually is. Mm. It's uh, what what is very very clear is that every country thinks that they're the worst. Every country has PPE problems. Every country thinks that their numbers are not being counted correctly. Um, it was very funny yesterday on the same day. I read a tweet from France and a tweet from the UK, and both were saying, "Whoa, this is terrible. We have the greatest number of deaths." Um, it, within two seconds of each other, and each person. It's funny how there's not a lot of exchange outside, um, you know, between, between, it would be interesting, I think it would be interesting to um, say what are the, what are the actual, um, you know, lockdown conditions which we are undergoing around the world? What about Malaysia? Yeah. Are Malaysia they doing is anything? doing very well. They've... Um... They actually got the uh, uh, Australia is doing particularly well. Uh, Michael was just oh yeah that they uh, <laughs> well, he's not headless free <laughs> in Adelaide. And Malaysia is kind of coming down a little bit. In fact, they were planning to relax the lockdown tomorrow. Uh, I think they've backed tracked on that because they've had a couple more cases, but they're keeping they're, they're fine tuning it like that, and they plan to open things up. I think on the thirteenth of May. And people are a little, still a bit concerned, a lot, which is a healthy concern. So a lot of people are concerned, but the, the trend is for it to go down and they seem to be uh, blocking the right kind of activities. But as Graham says, they have a lot of street vendors here who need to sell their product and they've got a, a street scene that really, uh, um, you know, thrives on that. And they've cut that, they've, they've totally cut all that out for the last six weeks. and. Um, so um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but but at the moment, it's looking pretty good. We're, we're still healthy. Because my question really was um, not like how is the country doing this? As I say, we all get our relative information. But how individually is the... Because lockdown means something different to each country. How is the lock? When I heard how strict it... The move, you're not allowed to oh, sell good. the bench. You're still here. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know if you've gone on to something else, but Malaysia has been, people have been very serious about the lockdown and we're all really in yeah. our homes and getting food deliveries and um, people are actually observing it. The police are out on the street and um, I'm on Penang, which is an island and it's a special situation. I think from what I read, things are different in Kuala Lumpur. They're having the problem now with Rohingya people who are living there. They're trying to get rid of them on the pretext that they're uh, being illegal migrants and so uh, anyway but I don't, I don't really know what I see is outside my window which is a beautiful scenery and uh, I don't I can't get any, 10 kilometers from my house so I really can't tell you much that goes on beyond that but uh, in my case here in Venezuela mm -hmm. what we have is uh, it's pretty much uh, the same as in Mexico and Malaysia in, in the sense that we have a uh, a lot of street vendors uh, that want to go uh, out and they are free to do, to do so because, uh, well, the government has uh, um, uh, instructed us to, to uh, not to go out, but we are free. We are, we are not going to be, uh, to have any uh, punishment or, or fee or, if, if we go out. However, what is uh, happening right now is that the lockdown has been forced because we don't have gasoline. <laughs> Unbelievably. Uh, Venezuela is one of the most... It's it was really one, ironic. Yeah, that's really ironic. So we, we don't have a gas to fill our tanks and uh, we just go out to, to look for uh, 
food, groceries, and that's it. And the ones that are respecting that from the very beginning, uh, I mean the, the, the lockdown, are the ones that are conscious because this is uh, serious stuff and uh, that we decide in our home. I've lost sound, is it? But it could be my internet. Well, I live in the Wild West, which means <laughs> there are people out in the streets protesting the lockdown in big groups with flags and banners saying, we won't be locked down, we'll do whatever we please. <laughs> and then there are people on beaches hanging out together and having barbecues and ignoring everything. But there's some nice people in there. Those sensible people like me are looking at our, our date and saying, okay, two weeks from now, ridiculous, in my opinion. <laughs> really? Wow. I can't believe it. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> what can you say? Well, about we that? had, uh, we, we had, they tried to, don't they, in, install the bit you had with. You had to have a, you wrote yourself a piece of paper when you were leaving the house, which says the day, the time, and the reason. And there was a series of reasons. So that um, theoretically then this can be checked by any kind of, even the local, the local, we call them police municipal, they're the local policemen was probably the most um, enthusiastic about checking it but even without getting it checked it kind of like it's it's a stop and think i mean at first everyone said this is you know ridiculous but then it really made a kind of stop and think uh, and then there were people uh, who you know were given fines so it then it didn't last but um voila we're supposed to be starting to come out on the 11th and uh, see what happens has your number of cases leveled off yeah it's definitely definitely down um the not the, you know the, the rate of increase has totally slowed down um but um, it was the the president of, of the, the prime minister of germany who gave a fantastic um talk as they were coming out because she said she said as addressing adults you know we'll give it a try if the contamination rate goes up to 1.2, that means that many hospital beds. If it goes up to 1.3, you know, we, we can cover it. If it goes up to 1.5, we immediately knock down again. You know, it was so, know what to expect. so honest, so okay. direct, so reasonable. It was, oh my goodness, you know, she, she, looks as if she's, she looks as if she's speaking to, you know, people who, intelligent people, you know, people who are normally intelligent who can understand it was goodness and now they it has gone up a little bit in germany and the, our newspapers are screeching ah oh, they've come out of lockdown and the numbers are going up you know but they knew oh. that it was going to start going up it was it was so you know the contrast was amazing here well, in the state you know every state is different yeah, uh, obviously. some states are coming out of lockdown and some are coming out fast and some are coming out slow and my state hasn't done anything yet. But this week we exceeded 60,000 deaths in the United States, mm -hmm. which is more than we lost in 11 years of war in Vietnam. Well, well every, everyone keeps... It's mostly still, still rising, I think. Would you agree, Lane? The, yes. There, there's been no leveling off in the hot spot. Yeah, but here we keep giving the numbers yeah. per country and to be comparable we have to give the numbers for Europe surely. You know, no one has added up the numbers for Europe. Yeah. But, uh, I, I'm, I'm sharing this uh, image that we made in uh, at our at the university and uh, well, this is just a draft because there are some uh, mistakes there. But uh, we we shared this from university from the university, the, the masters, 
that we administer in our department uh, so as to uh, make people conscious of uh, the idea of flattening the curve of coronavirus. However, here we don't, we haven't had so many cases as we have seen in Spain or in uh, other countries, well, Italy. Um, and that's probably the reason why uh, people are, have decided to go out. Oh, okay. <laughs> in Denmark. Hello. Hello, everyone. Besitos. Hello. Who's that? Who's there? Nice. Doris. Hello. Hello, Doris. Nice, nice to see you all. Doris. <laughs> yes. This is to everyone. Uh, here back in Hujuy, we already have three weeks without any, any case. So people are going out. Yesterday we went shopping and, and what I could see that people is respecting the, the rules. They, they have their, you know, mouths covered and they keep distances at the supermarket. And, and when you get in, you get, you know, some lotion to clean your hands. And even though, and you know, and what is happening now is that we have having problems with, there is a big problem in Argentina with jail, with people in jail, that they are letting people out of jail. So <laughs> it's a big problem uh, because it's like they are not studying who is going out. So the victims are, come on, how are you doing this? You know, so uh, that's covering part of, you know, people is busy looking at that problem now. And, and but mostly they are respecting the law and, and they are very frustrated. And they, Start believing like okay, is this a comparison? Uh, you know, from all the governments in the world, uh, it is crazy times. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's my report from here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in Denmark, we are John, hoping to get you know, to get the numbers up. We have had uh, two too few people hospitalized, so they they want uh, the the number of the contaminated people to go up. So it's uh, the, the, the opposite world. Uh, they are opening up uh, deliberately knowing that uh, there will be more people ill. Uh, the, the small children up to uh, age 12 are back in school for two weeks now. Uh, they haven't been time enough to see if this will uh, impact on the statistics, but uh, they are ready to, to, to slow down again if it becomes too hard. The, the, most important part is, uh, they say from, from the, the health uh, authorities, is that um, the hospitals can, can follow the rate and there have been very few people in hospital. So, so it's, it's quite different here. Not so many dead. In Australia has been interesting and I think Australia has a huge advantage because we have less population in a very large space. So the average yes. amount of room that people have in Australian cities is much bigger. We have parks everywhere, there are beaches, there are rivers. It's very easy to hop in your car, drive for five minutes and you have a place where you're walking on your own. So I think that's a huge advantage. But Australia has had almost no restrictions that have been enforced by law. There's been a lot of regulations saying this is what we advise you to do, but basically it's being left up to the people to follow the rules or not. And I think what you, what you get in a country like Australia is Australia are a bit like blind sheep. They, they obey the government. They kind of do the right thing. They follow the rule of law. And really, in the last month, to watch Australians behave everywhere, there have been exceptions. A lot of us are just saying it's just astounding to watch how Australians have obeyed the rules and done the right thing and it's paying off. We have very few cases and we got in early and for all those reasons I think Australia's been really lucky but it hasn't been done by forcing people to do anything. It's been done with suggestions, recommendations and then trust and it's worked. Yes, that, that's wonderful. It feels wonderful. It might backfire. Who knows what happens next week? But so far, so good. I'm glad you don't have bunches of lunatics running around saying that their, their no, liberties and rights are being violated. 
no. like to, I mean, I have never seen that, but I know it's it's happened in this state and around the country, as and as Lane pointed out <laughs> in New York. I think here in Jujuy, people is obeying is because they we have had this almost for a month already, and at the very beginning it was the first uh, borders and at the beginning they were like okay this is not fair we are cut in the middle, but they had had the time to get used to it okay and so park and walk and keeping distance and, and uh, yes, as I told you yesterday, I went out and uh, what I, we were on, 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 on our car and, and I could see people walking on the streets and everybody was like, you know, of course, you know, if you are caught without a mask, you're going to pay a fine. That, that's why <laughs> that helps. So Those you got, uh, it's amazing when you can tell people and trust them and other people. Yes, yes. Right now, that's people are starting to complain because now that they are going sense. out and they, they have to keep the mask for a long time. And, and Nobody is wearing masks here. Now it's fine, but when it, um, when it gets hot this summer, it's going to be awful. The, yes. we're, told that it, we're told that it hasn't reached uh, South America yet. Um, and as you speak, I was looking at the figures and it gives a total number of deaths for the whole of Argentina is 237. So it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's really tiny compared to how many what's yes. happening. Is it in Argentina is a very large, large. So, <laughs> uh, but the, what are the, the yeah, COVID, you know, all the, so that's why they are locking, and I think locking is has worked here. And yeah, back good. in Venezuela yeah, is is another story. You know, right now they, we don't know for sure. That even though the government says that we are the champions of the test and all that, we oh, don't no, know. I thought that was the United <laughs> States, according to Donald Trump. <laughs> No, no, no. You do everything better than everybody no, no, else. No. He does, anyway. <laughs> like you are the champion of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Over there, this, this, what, oh, you know what's happening here also in Argentina is that they have a big uh, number of uh, dengue uh, cases. You know, it's much, mm. much, much larger uh, than, than the COVID thing. So, really? Um, yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's pretty bad. So they are not paying attention to dengue uh, because everybody is, and all the government is, is but again, and that's what <laughs> I think is true, governments are taking advantage of the situation to do mm -hmm. other things, you know, to cover up things. And mm -hmm. and I've seen it in, in mm -hmm. Venezuela and seen it and, and looking at that here and uh, probably in the United States or, and Brazil is crazy also. Yeah, you got a president crazy. that is going crazy over there, so. Uh, that's what happened in Nicaragua and in all the countries that they have, you know, this, uh, even Russia, I think. So, yeah, the there's Brazilian something there. Guy today, when they told him about the number of people who died in the last few days, he said, so what? <laughs> what so what? Yes, and Brazil is even larger than Argentina. Yeah. There's a lot of people there. So what? So yeah. how how are the um, how are the borders between Brazil and Argentina up there, isn't and it? other countries? Is is there restricted passage? Are people able to cross well, the border? El Chaco, El Chaco, and, and Misiones is where uh, there are more cases, and that's because of the border with uh, with Brazil. Uh, Argentina locked the borders. Okay. There are no flights coming in or out. Um, so what but happens? that's where it, it's, it's a, there's a point where there are three, three borders, that's Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina. And it's, it's, it's really, uh, I mean, there are a lot of, uh, it's, it's a big rivers configuration there. And, and 
So it's difficult to keep uh, track of, of the borders there. We went to Paraguay and, and again, over there, but they also have dengue. And because it's warm and, and, and the rains and, and the mosquitoes are really high there. As Doris, as Doris was saying, some of the borders are not very well <clears throat> closed. For example, the, bo the border in the north of Uruguay with Brazil, it's just a street. You can walk across the street between Uruguay and Brazil. So you can, you can, you can cross very easily. It's the Where same there are kind of natural borders like rivers or mountains. It's the same in so Paraguay. To, uh, to close. We, w we went to, to Brazil through Paraguay and when we crossed the border, we couldn't believe it because there was not any control there. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were like, okay, we are in Brazil now and <laughs> nobody stop us. Uh, what about our passports? Uh, yeah. We started to go around the city that is the first city there, asking people, what do we do? I mean, of course, we didn't speak Portuguese, so <laughs> it was kind of funny, we were like scared. And then we had to go to a police station somewhere and it was all locked, so you just ring a bell, yeah. and they okay, they let you in, and they okay. So uh, if we're going to go to Rio, to... and they say okay, and we never had one control <laughs> all the way from there to to Rio, and it was like. A but was that years. during the pandemic or before the pandemic? That was before the pandemic, of course. Okay. I don't know now, but with that president, I don't think they had many controls. So. So know. after Argentina closed the borders, what happened to people who got stuck outside? Oh, well, that's the tragedy to... of, uh, with Venezuelans also, uh, uh, yes, Venezuelans. Right now, that's terrible because you got a lot of big refugees. I mean, Venezuelans have been on the, on the road uh, trying to get from one country to another country looking for a better life because, mm -hmm. and yesterday in Peru, they were on the road because what is happening? You know, they are refugees. They don't have money. Now they are the lockdown. They cannot work, so they cannot survive. They cannot produce uh, money to get food or to pay rent. So what mm -hmm. is happening to them is that people is throwing them out in the street. Okay, they they they, they are not refugees uh, camps or things like that. So people are coming back to Venezuela, yep. walking. And there was it's this big... uh, group of people that were in Peru and they stayed the night and they stayed on the side of the road and one truck, you know, uh, ran over them and some of them are dead. And, and this is something that yes. happens every day. Every day is, uh, you got a story like that, people walking on the street. So what uh, this pandemic has done is, is people, uh, countries have panicked close the borders, people are trapped in airports or at the border. Uh, here we have, uh, Jujuy has a border with Bolivia. And so they are taken into quarantine. And now, okay, quarantine is over now, what do we do? There's a couple, <laughs> she is Venezuelan, he is, he is uh, from Chile, he wants to go to Chile, but she cannot go because she, is, she doesn't have a, a visa and the husband say, I don't want to separate, I don't want to go without my wife, but you're going to stay here, who, who he says, you're going to stay here because you're already, uh, we need the space for more people that are coming. So they, they call me, Doris, can you help these people, you know, and I said, okay, let me call Cruz Roja, you know, the Red Cross. So you got this tragedy. Uh, it is, it is, it is very bad everywhere. And for refugees, it's really, 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 really bad. You know, even though they are out in the street, they feel. Oh well, <laughs> back in Venezuela, it's a disaster. Yeah, there was definitely a, a it killing. Is. <laughs> there was a killing in a in a in a jail uh, yesterday or the day before. People uh, were trying to get food to the, the, the people that are in jail in Venezuela right now. Jails are full of uh, politics, uh, I mean, for political reasons. So they are not like criminals. Uh -huh. And so the families were taking food to them. And according to, to what I read, to the, of course, the government doesn't say anything about that. Uh, the, the, the guards were, yeah, I mean, in Venezuela it's really, really hard to find food or anything so they were keeping the food and they were not giving it to the people so they got really angry the the ones <gasps> that they ate and they went to the to the door and there are 47 of them dead now 
so yes and nobody's responsible for that and that's because of kobe i mean people are uh, it's also part of it but in venezuela it's triple the the problems no 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 uh, kobe has been really bad so i hope that it, it soon goes away and i do I agree definitely with you. <laughs> it will go away like a miracle. Yes, please. Yes. I don't know. Oh well, people are saying that this, uh, this, uh, all this COVID is uh, helping or is uh, giving him some kind of uh, a break. to uh, it's not it's not true because uh, we have uh, so many problems and uh, this is uh I, i think covid is one of the the it's not as important as it has uh, been for the whole world and uh, i don't know whether we are uh, our immune system is uh, stronger than uh, anybody else in the world but, but as i was telling you some minutes ago um i haven't seen so many cases and it's not just that the numbers are being nor that the they are in my a neighborhood or a where my mother lives or a, no no cases no, no or not so many cases as uh, i have seen in italy in spain in other countries and uh, probably probably it's uh, because we have had dengue we have had zika we have had malaria we have had uh, those those illness that the that the rest of the world has not uh, faced uh, in in dick at them please the tuberculosis and all that so it's a it's a crazy stuff what is uh, happening here and uh, well the government is using that uh, for their for the for their benefit i guess the covid is something that is giving them a break uh, some uh, yeah a, a reason for them to to control are ourselves. you sorry mirna nice to meet you i haven't met you before are you in venezuela no <laughs> oh my god yes i am here i mean i'm a I'm a professor from Instituto okay, Pedagogico de Caracas. Okay, so are you uh, friends with Evelyn Izquierdo? Evelyn Izquierdo, Daphne, Naira Paricio, <laughs> well, those very well, active people. Well, un abrazo people. fuerte, fuerte para ti, Melinda. <laughs> you know well, you know much better, you Thank know much you, better gracias. what's going on there. Uh, we just keep in touch with family yeah. every day through WhatsApp. Uh, and, and, you know, I read a lot Naki Soto. Are you familiar with Naki Soto? I've, I've seen her, but I, I'm not that, uh, I'm not a friend of her. I've seen her name in... Yes, she, she writes, she writes, uh, I, she always uh, writes a report every day on Facebook. And, <laughs> and that's how okay. I found out about, <laughs> about what's happening in Venezuela every day. It's very objective, and, and but it's, it, it tells you what's going on there. So I recommend her. Her name is Naki Soto <laughs> yeah. in Facebook. Okay. Her husband was taken uh, into jail uh, once. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why they are still fighting and uh, still there. <laughs> they are a young couple. It's the same um, question you know, because my, my husband is a retired professor from Universidad Simón Bolívar and he's uh, constantly saying, Mirna, why don't you retire? Why don't you go out? And I say, well, uh, okay, we have to have a plan before we leave because, uh, you know, all those, I have uh, colleagues that are living in Ar Argentina, 
Colombia and different countries and they're saying they, they are struggling to, to pay the rent, to pay uh, their uh, expenses. So it's a, a, it's not a good idea to go without a plan and being uh, completely sure that we are, you have a job that is going to, to make you live. It was uh, much easier before. Recently. Now it's, it's more difficult. We are everywhere, you know, Venezuelans are all over the world. Mm -hmm. So when there were yeah. a few, it was easier to get started. But now it's, it gets more complicated. So it's like now you have to stay and see the end of this. And, and you know, and then you're going to be the heroes because you are survivors. You know, what doesn't kill you, it makes you strong, what they say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. My apologies if I keep people waiting in the waiting room. I don't know how long you've been waiting. <laughs> Ram, uh, Raymond Lane, you've been there for oh, minutes, Sorry to be I'm late. Home. Just overslept. Ah, okay. Is it not too late to say hi? No, no, not uh, at all. Late. Rita from Argentina. Yes, I was hoping you would come because I watched your demonstration afterwards. And uh, because I too absolutely love my jing sun on my machine and like hiker i haven't moved you know just can't imagine there being no more jing for screen captures but what was what i found was very very um i had a an epiphany moment because it was only because i knew you and wanted to listen to you that i found it so you know that it inspired me to go and look through and i spent the whole morning sorting out all of these things which i'd left to one side and uh, it really, really made me uh, insisted on the importance of the interpersonal relationship in teaching, you know? I mean, I know I had to do it for ages, but you kind of took me by the hand and I've been through all of my programs saying, God, just catch up again, Elizabeth. <laughs> you know, so thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Um, Halima is here, I suppose. She's muted. And Chris, we haven't heard from you. How, you I guess Spain okay. was pretty hard hit. But uh, Vance, how are you? Assalamu alaikum from Tashkent, Uzbekistan. I see, <laughs> I see there are dozens of very good educators. Uh, and the number 13 in Russian culture is not good. Well, it is called devil dojan. <laughs> Maybe plus me. <laughs> I am great to be with a great team here. Thank you very much. Yes, welcome. Anyway, uh, Chris was just about to say something. Wish you that you, may, uh, you stay safe and that lockdown will be ending very soon. And we will get you good events and we can uh, see each other. Thank you very much. My camera doesn't work when something is happening. Therefore, uh, I'll see, I I see all of you. You cannot see me. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll try to fix that. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, we've, um, we've just been allowed to go for a walk for the first time in seven weeks. Um, Chris, where are you? That in the mm. chat. Oh, in Barcelona. Uh, okay. We're allowed to walk for one hour. Um, there's special times for us oldies. If you're over 70, you've got two slots in the day. You can only take one. Um, you're recommended to wear a mask. But, um, you don't, it's not obligatory. Um, and we went out for the first time yesterday. Um, and it was uh, very strange, um, but um, we'll, we'll go out again today and every day, make the most of the one hour that we're allowed um, for the next week or two weeks until they change the, the, the rules and regulations again. So Chris, if you broke those rules and went out before or after, or if you were out a bit late, what would happen? Would you actually be arrested or? I don't think so. Um, 
the police go around with um, loudspeakers and their vehicles saying, uh, keep two meters apart, um, saying things about the, the, uh, the times that you're allowed to be there and the times you're not. Um, what we saw a lot of people walking dogs. We saw a couple of people with kids who shouldn't have been out. And we saw a few young people, no idea if they were going shopping, because of course you're allowed to go shopping, food. Um, but founded by people, it was easy enough to keep two meters away from everyone. But I guess when you're out walking, it's not uh, sort of, it's not the interaction where it becomes more difficult. I mean, you know, you're, you're walking, you're not exchanging, I don't know. See what I mean? We were allowed to go for a walk with one other person from the same household. What would happen if you had a child and a spouse? Could you only go with... Could go. Oh, I talk about, about micromanagement. Um, and I don't know, I think there have been some fines, but they've been on people who've been trying to travel by car to places that they're not allowed to. So if you have a, a house in the country, 300 kilometers away, you're not allowed to go there because the medical services in the country uh, are very sparse. Yeah, and Greece is trying to do the same, keep people yeah. from going back to their villages at Easter and for May Day, and they yeah. would normally have done that. Obviously a three day weekend, May the 1st um, and Saturday and Sunday, and very, I'm sure some people have been tempted and unable to resist the temptation and um, have tried to do things. Um, but mostly I think people are sticking to the rules. I think because they think they're sensible, not because of fear of being fined 600 euros yeah. or something. I haven't been in a store since the middle of March. It's so weird. The thought of being able to go back into a store and to walk into it and to feel like I could get a fatal disease by touching something, it's going to be really weird. And I don't know, you know, when, when Maryland relaxes those restrictions until they have a vaccine, I just, I don't know if I would dare to go back to what you know what has become normal life for me? I take a plastic gloves when I leave the house. I've always got a set of gloves in my pocket. When I walk into a shop, most shops now have sanitizer at the door. So you clean your hands before you walk into the shop. You can put, then I put the gloves on. Then I handle whatever I handle. I take things off the shelf, put it in a bag or whatever. As I'm walking out, I take off the gloves, I sanitize my hands again, and then I typically get in the car. I've got sanitizer in the car now, and I do it again when I get in the car, then I wash my hands when I get home, and it's repeat all day long, all the time. And I think that's what everybody's doing. Do it and it will be like that for a long time. Sorry, Elaine? You do it because you have to, or is this by, no, I don't mean the protocol, but I mean, why do you go out? Why do you go into stores? Why don't you just stay home? What to is get it? food or oh, to get a, a, a light break. So you need a light globe or... No, you know. we order everything. We order all our food online. We haven't been yeah. in a shop. I think my wife went into a shop once or twice maybe, but everything online. Yeah, we haven't been anywhere except my, my daughter is suffering without her, her junk food takeout. So we have been a couple of times to get her chili and cheeseburgers and she's angling for a fresh pizza because we've just been uh, getting frozen pizzas for her. 
But other than that, uh, the only place I've been is the park. I don't even take my wallet when I go out anymore. I just take my driver's license. It sits on a shelf by the back door. I stick it in my back pocket, go out, come back, you know, because there's never, there's no other place to go. <laughs> it's not that I couldn't go. There are lots of, there, a lot of places are open. open. Some are open for pickup, but I just don't want to take any chances with this disease. Yeah, some <laughs> restaurants have food for That's only figuratively speaking. You know, the only place I went was I had to go to the doctor. I, most of my medical appointments, have, I'm just postponing them, but I had a problem with my throat and I wanted to go to the doctor, so I did. But I was so nervous going. I was more nervous about the protocol of the gloves and the mask and wiping everything than I was about my throat. <laughs> but right, you imagine. he diagnosed me with something I never, I don't have anything wrong with me, basically, I'm fine. But he diagnosed me with something I never heard of before. It's called vocal abuse. Oh, <laughs> I like You've it. You've been abusing your vocal cords. I like it. He said, I'm talking too much. <laughs> Well, you've been abusing people so, too much. Because I'm doing all these, I'm in great demand, not to say, but I mean, people want me to do these webinars because I know how to teach online. And it's by, people keep saying, oh, will you do this, this, this. And every day all, I'm on these Zoom, to you I'm just talking normally. But when you present, you, you know, it's a different thing. And he said I was, I was ruining my voice. Like... <laughs> Anyway, I'm so what you need learning. to do, Lane, is to record yourself one time and then no, because it's different. disseminate your recording. Yeah. This is Lane you. coming to you by recording. She does that. <laughs> That's the front part of the flip. And then she gives the talk, and then you have to go and then you can see the, re the talk afterwards. The SOFLA. What does SOFLA stand for? So, that, so that's how. Well, actually, Graham and Chris were there last yeah. one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Synchronous online flipped learning approach. No, I haven't um, written it up. I should shut up and write. That's what I should do. Dear yeah. colleagues, you are living in a country where you are freely speaking English, but I'm from Uzbekistan, where English is a third language. Yes. Um, the force is Uzbek, then Russian, and then English. Therefore, we don't forget our professional knowledge and we are training. Uh, I learned something like to open uh, Microsoft Room. It was a, a good webinar from Macmillan. Uh, Macmillan goes to, to sell online in clouds and we learned how to buy in cloud shops. Uh, order uh, things. It's a, so a great novelty for Uzbekistan. Then I tried to, to learn uh, tricks of Google Classroom. Uh, then uh, I have a good Telegram group of uh, uh, 80 people. Uh, Telegram groups are like bar of uh, so deep. In. Nobody knows what's going on there, only members. And I try to give them information. The most uh, colleagues are from very rough uh, regions uh, for 300, 400 uh, uh, kilometers from Tashkent, very far. Therefore, I try to handle in mood. They do not forget their professional knowledge and also gain new digital skills. And we have some content here who contributed in coronavirus battling with what? Maybe I will say about my contribution uh, that I tried to teach because I am a long life learner. I am 77 years old, yes, but I try, okay? I, I study some tricks. Now, what about shopping? Shopping is like this. My son is living close to me. They go to shop. But we do not like big shopping in shopping center. If somebody was in Uzbekistan, knows what is bazaars, 
Bazaars are full of fruits nowadays because cherries are reddening. And my son goes to bazaar with daughter-in-law. They make all shops, shopping, and then make extra for me packaging and buy a taxi. They order it to bring me home. Then they call me saying, what's the name of Texas? Texas will stop opposite my door and he will handle all the things. I will never go out. Uh, he will phone it. I will see. The uh, if you get a pension. Uh, other people, are, are we all coming through clearly? Or I think maybe Halima and Tajikistan, yes. sorry, in Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Yes, I know Uzbekistan. my yes. daughter-in-law is from there. Maybe you have heard that we have a great um, uh, natural disease here because we have a dump of water near Tashkent. It was, uh, no, it was uh, like uh, uh, flooding water. Our president is there to help people because uh, it was raining three or five days very heavily. It's a problem here, yes. But I think that all things will be okay because our people are very hard people. We bring uh, to the place and the people, volunteers bring to people who need this, okay? But we are trying to be with you. No, I know nowadays how to make presentation at Zoom room. I studied all tricks, therefore, uh, if you would like to share a page with me, once I can show you some, uh, what is typical uh, Zoom room? Usually our uh, people who live abroad, they all on Zoom rooms, then they find good presenters, usually from America, and they make our Zoom. I say, no, I do not need them. Uh, Vince is my friend and I learned it very well. I know how to do things by myself. And I would like to make presentation like how to find good jobs because we open new universities here and um, how to help people, how to write essays. It is a problem. How to write essay, not uh, like franchises from internet, but uh, authentic. For example, what to do in a, lock, in a boring uh, lockdown time. Not all people can write essays uh, uh, with uh, 100 or 200 uh, words, uh, like RTS requirements, also with statement, paraphrasing, and paragraph. It's a problem for us. If somebody is ready to help us, I can uh, invite you as a presenter in my seminar. Because you are a native speaker, it's a, for you no a problem. Maybe somebody speak German. No, no that's I, okay. I do not see uh, my family. I do not. Halima, no, maybe we, somebody. No. We need yes. to. We need to move on. So. It's a very interesting. Now I seen Nina Leakos, yes, and I know Graham Stanley. I have heard about him. <laughs> No, and our Van Stevens, of course. Thank yeah. you, thank you. And Doris, of course. I thank will you. repair my video camera next time, okay? Okay. Yes. And uh, <laughs> okay. my wife wants us to end soon because she's got dinner on the table. And <laughs> okay. how about you guys? Nice to see You're everybody. So breakfast uh, is waiting yes. for you, lunch for later. Besitos to everyone. Besitos, Mirna. Yeah, and hey, nice you. I'd just like to say that this this is our night for just talking, but we do, you know, we encourage you to come on and give topics like uh, Rita did just uh, the last time we were there. Elaine uh, talked to us about SOFLA, uh, her flipped learning strategy. And if you want to come and uh, give us a talk, I think Graham has offered to do this. So I hope uh, hey, Graham will. Yes. Next weekend, there's going to be the virtual uh, round table, virtual yes, world table, right. round table. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, Oops, sorry, I got the wrong. And I, I'm i going to do the round table also. They asked me to come back and instead of talking about the flip model, they want me to do the whole cycle of it actually as a demonstration, not mm -hmm. to explain, but do. So I'm going to do that too. On uh, Friday, I think. Yeah, yes. the Heikas, Heikas Virtual Roundtable. 
Yes. Uh, actually, if you yes. go, I just I just put a link in the text chat. The learning together one, I, I think the okay. learning together one gives you the links to go to, and the, all these things are also mentioned in the Talon uh, page, oh, okay. which Talon I suppose is temporary. You never know; it might go on forever. As they say, the problem <laughs> right now is the we can't go back to normal. That was the problem, you know. So. Uh, no telling what the normal will be, but anyway, I don't anticipate that Talon will, I mean, once we all get back to whatever normalcy there is, I'll be focusing more on just learning together. But right now, uh, I'm encouraging people to come as often as they can and uh, just talk to us, give us seminars, webinars, if you like. Uh, the virtual roundtable is the next one. There's a lady named Karen Schwartz, I believe is her name. She's going to talk to us about coding in uh, as a way of teaching natural language processing to English students. She has some interesting things. She has papers online. You can, she has a portfolio where she has her slides and her papers up and uh, she'll be along. Let's see, I've got over here somewhere that's on, uh, um, on May, the 8th. May 11th, Monday, May 11th. I'm oh, sorry. So after that, okay. we're kind of easy. Uh, but we have these events every Sunday. So anyway, anybody wants to just go into the, the Talon uh, page and uh, you can set up a, a date. You can put a date down and we'll do it in this chat room if you like. And um, otherwise, you could use your own if you want. Um, but uh, anyway, if I do it in this one, at least uh, I can make the recording and blog it right afterwards. So. You know what we're doing, uh, Elena Galani and, and, and me, she's been, she's, I mean, she's like a godmother, a fairy godmother to us, to my students on Saturday we get together and yesterday we uh, showed them about Second Life. <laughs> so, who, who is that? Who? Uh, <laughs> who? Elena Galani is, is ah, also a Helena, teacher. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Yeah, Helena, From Greece, and yeah. she also has her avatar. So yesterday, uh, we uh, we introduced them to Bionia Destiny and, and her avatar, and we built her house. And so I'm planning on, on on inviting teachers that are in Second Life only. For example, a Kip Yellow Jacket, that is one of the most famous in yes. in, in Second Life. Uh, so I'm going to invite him because we're having something like a show and tell on Saturday. So we invite uh -huh. people. So if you ever feel <laughs> inclined, you, I can invite you so they can meet you. And, and Please like, do. I've been going you know, back into Second Life. These people, uh, the VFTE <laughs> people who are doing Minecraft Mondays, they, they meet in Second Life. So I've been yes, uh, yes, our yes. virtual roundtable. Second Life is like web heads. Once a web head, always a web head. Yeah, so. no, I've been doing it lately. So please, it along and I'll, maybe I can come uh, make some screenshots so we can do a learning together thing or a talent thing or whatever. Uh, it depends on yes, how. Yes, yes. So, so, yeah. One of the Saturdays, maybe, we can mm -hmm. have something together. <laughs> so, a kiss to everybody. Have a wonderful week. Okay. And keep safe. Be healthy. You too. Okay. Nice to see everybody. Thank you. Nice, nice to, nice to see, see you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Okay. Meeting you. Bye. 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 Okay. So I'm going to stop the recording. And that stops.